this is the great boon of diversity, that first of all, you can learn new ideas, hear new ideas, which may be true and which may which as a result make you change your own behavior as a society, or they may be true in part and thus may make you adapt some of your behavior. And then secondly, they may be things which you still consider to be wrong, but which strengthen your society by strengthening your arguments about why those things are wrong. The reason why the issue of diversity threatening uh, open societies comes up so often now is a matter of scale, is a matter of uh, this society, for instance, not being able to or not feeling able to uh, impose its own norms on people who come into the country. And that's why uh, the issue of the threats to our societies have become so clear in the last 60 years or so since mass immigration uh, began in Britain in the post-war period. People don't want to engage in that reciprocal relationship that I described. If people don't want to reply in kind to the advantages they have, then there will be a problem for that. And I mean, I think the great example of that, the obvious example that comes up, is about not failing to speak the language. There will <coughs> be a downside to that. As we see, there already is with people. And I think we have to accept that if people don't take a part in the state fully, they will not fully enjoy the state. And that's simply how it will be. You have to have common um, frames of reference. That's, that's the m most straightforward thing. There has to be a history you know about and can share. When Trevor mentions Queen Elizabeth, you don't think, oh, which one, whereabouts, <laughs> which century are we talking about? Uh, and and a common literature, art, and, and all of these sorts of things, as well as a, a, a common set of I ideas. And, and if you know those things, then, as I say, you can riff on them in all sorts of ways, but if you don't, it's just noise.